methods. Methods are how we name a block of code that we can reuse throughout our programs. Uh, sometimes we refer to this as modularization, where we're going to um, we're going to decide on some code that we can name and reuse over and over again. It allows us to reuse code easily, so that we're not rewriting several lines of code. Um, and let's take a look at some examples here. So I'm just going to uh, put down an add numbers method. So we start with uh, access modifier. It can be public, private, or protected. Uh, then we determine if it's going to be static or not static. And static means uh, we can call it from uh, just a reference to the class. If it's non-static, then we're going to uh, call it from an object or an instance of the class. And the way that we make it non-static is just to leave out the word static. So if I had static here, it would be um, only usable from a reference to the class. We're going to use it from an object, and as I'll link the explanation, so I'm going to leave out the keyword static. Uh, in this case, we'll just print right from the method. So I'm going to put void, and that means that we're not going to return a value from the method. Then we have the name of the method. And now we have a list of parameters. So we could have zero parameters, and we just have empty parentheses. Uh, or we can have a list of parameters, and we list in C Sharp, we list them with a type and a name. And that's the most basic way to do it. Later, you'll learn that you can have uh, default values for it. And in a lot of languages, we can have uh, labels associated with the parameter as well. Uh, Okay, so what we're going to do inside of the method is we're going to add these two numbers together. We, we could create a uh, local variable that's only available inside of the method and set that equal to the sum. Uh, and the way that we send back a value is to say return and then some value. But with void, we're not going to actually return. So I'll just output constant.write line sum. Okay, so how do we call the method? Well, because we made this a non-static method, we left out that keyword static, we need to actually create an instance of the example class. So what we're going to do is we're going to say example, just like we're defining a variable, example object. And this part should be familiar, right? This is the type, just like we say int and then some variable name. Uh, here we have the type, which is our class, making this an object, and then this is our identifier, or our object name, and with an object we need to instantiate it, so we'll say new example. Once we do that, we can use example object to access any public properties or methods that are exposed inside of the class. So here we can say add numbers. And we need to send in two integer values. So we'll send in 9 and 100. And let's run it. So what happens is um, it knows that our code knows that example object is of type example. So we load this uh, class stub into memory and we have ex uh, we have all of these methods available to us then. Then anytime it encounters this uh, dot, it's going to try to access code that's available from this example class and it finds add numbers. And the way it finds the method is based on the, what's called the method signature and that includes the method name, so add numbers, and the number and type of parameters. So the first parameter is an integer value. The second parameter is an integer value. So it's going to look for add numbers with two integer values. And it finds this. So it finds uh, it has one integer value and a, and a second integer value. And so it calls this method. So it jumps to this point in code, to the starting point. It runs this code and then it returns back to where we called the method from. We call that the calling point and then it continues to run. So we're changing the uh, control sequence of our program, uh, but instead of like a loop where we're 
uh, running the loop and then jumping back up to the top and running and jumping back to the top. We're going to actually jump to a completely different part of code, run the method, and then jump back to the calling point. Uh, let's let's have uh, let's do what's called method overloading. So we can take this method and we can create another example of it, but have this time three parameters. And when we're talking about the method implementation or, or the definition uh, in the in the header here, we're talking about uh, parameters. So this is like a local variable. It's called a parameter, but it's like a local variable that's only available while we're running inside of the method. As soon as we jump to add methods, A becomes available in memory and it is assigned the value that we send as an argument. Okay, so uh, the parameter takes on the value that we send in as an argument. This is the argument list. And it's only available until we get to the end of the method and then when we return back to the calling point, A, B, and C will go out of scope. It will no longer be available in memory. If you have Visual Studio installed, it's nice to run that and go to the debug menu and view the windows for locals and watch what happens in memory as we go through our program. Okay, so I'm going to run this. And you can see now that it jumps to this other method, this other add method, I'm sorry, add numbers method, because it has uh, three integer variables defined. We can do the same with double. Uh, I'll take the first one. Uh, there is a way in C sharp to define a, a literal value as a double. And the way we do that is to end with a D. should run the third one. And I'll, let me do this. I'll put double sum. Actually, So the first one's going to say you have two parameters, second one have three, and then we can call this double. Um, and what we're doing is the not D is not part of the value. Actually, it's what it's saying to C sharp is this value 9.9. .9, it should be represented in memory as a double value. So there you have it. Three methods. They belong to this class example. Notice that we end class main with a curly brace here. So this is the entire class main, main class, I'm sorry. And then we have a separate class, for example. Be careful with those curly braces. You should be able to count the closed curly braces and the open curly braces, and they should match up uh, with the number of curly braces for open and for close. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to methods and uh, the idea of method overloading. Thanks.